Hello, everybody. I'm Kenneth Copeland. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this broadcast today, and we worship you and praise you. Thank you, sir. We open our hearts and we open our minds to the heavenly gifts, the things that you've done just because you love us. And we praise you and we reach into you by faith to receive revelation from heaven, to receive peace, joy, healing, deliverance, well-being throughout this whole radio and television audience. We receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's open our Bibles again today, if you would, to the uh, third chapter of John's Gospel. And we're talking about the gift of God. And notice this, 16th verse, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. Now notice it said, For God so loved the world that He gave Jesus. So write this down. Jesus is the heavenly gift. And I receive the gift right now. Now then, Luke chapter 11. And we will look at... Uh, Let's, let's beginning in the ninth verse. And I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given. So write down the word given there in the ninth verse. Ask, it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asks receives. Well, Brother Copeland, everyone? Oh, yeah. Everyone. There is, though, the element of faith. Jesus said, everyone that asks believing receives. And, and of course, we understand that. Look, well, if you would, let's just turn back over there again where we were, John 3. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Whosoever believeth in Him. So believing and asking, asking, believing in Him. Amen? You made the connection there? Now see, people have the idea that, that well, there's bound to be something I have to do. Oh yeah, there is. You have to believe. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And ask. Okay? <laughs> okay. Let's go back over there again now to Luke chapter 11. Ask, and it'll be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened to you. For everyone, everyone that asks receives. He that seeks finds. To him that knocks, it shall be opened. If a son shall ask bread of any of you that's a father, will he give him a stone? If he ask a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? If he shall ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? Well, of course not. If you then, being evil, know how to give, you know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask Him? Well, He is, Jesus is the heavenly gift. <laughs> so is the Holy Spirit. Amen? Glory to God. Now, let me ask you something. I, this, this was some years ago. And uh, I, I had the Lord ask me this. He said, Kenneth, um, do, I, do I heal you because you have faith? And I thought, well, and, 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 and I, I'm sitting there, you know, running that through my thinking. He said, now, it takes faith because without faith, we, we don't have any, any connection. But he said, I don't heal you because you have faith. He said, son, I heal you because I love you. 
<laughs> oh, glory to God. Oh, it just got all the way over me and all the way through me. And he said, that's the reason I want you to prosper is because I love you. That's the reason I want you to be at peace because I love you. That's the reason I want your families and your, your marriages to, uh, to be healed and well because I love you. He said, I, I want everything to be well with you. Amen. God has never been the author of sickness, disease, demons, fear, poverty, or anything else that's under the curse. Now, I said all of that to get this in, in, in place in our thinking. Actually, now, now hang on a minute and, and, and think about this uh, from a spiritual uh, standpoint. Salvation doesn't belong to the church. No, no. If it, if it did, nobody would ever got it the first place. Salvation belongs to the world. Healing belongs to the world. Jesus is the gift to the world. The Holy Spirit gift belongs to the church. The gifts of the Spirit that bring about manifestations of healings and miracles and signs and wonders and, and the workings of the Holy Spirit. Of course, salvation is the working of the Holy Spirit. Amen. But now, Jesus is God's gift to the world. The Holy Spirit is God's gift to the church. Now, let me back up here a second because this is be the one that might trip you up a little bit, but, but again, think this through. Healing doesn't just belong to the church. Healing belongs to the world. Really? Oh, yeah. Amen. God will heal sinners. <laughs> I mean, glory to God, I've seen it happen. And you think about it a little bit. Nobody got born again before Jesus went to the cross. Amen. And, you, and, and another thing, healing and miracles in the church are the church's advertisement of Jesus to the world. Amen. We've had people, I've, I've, I've seen it happen. <laughs> I'm thinking about, Lord, um, well, I'm, a <laughs> um, Well, yeah, yeah, I, I can tell it that way, I believe. When we had, years ago, uh, our, our ministry had put satellite dish in, in every, um, every Texas um, prison, penitentiary, jail throughout the state of Texas, and eventually grew to Arkansas and Oklahoma and Colorado, where we put satellite receivers in there, and, and they were bringing our broadcast down and and they were um, people in the in prisons were watching them, and this young man came to me, and he had tears in his eyes, and I, you know, I preached in a lot of a lot of prisons, seen a lot of wonderful things happen, preached on death row, in different places and that kind of thing, marvelous, wonderful thing, had tears in his eyes, he, brother Copeland. I really need you to forgive me. <laughs> I said, uh, for what? Well, he said, you know, now they had the television set would be there in, in a day room or, or someplace where they could gather. And, and, but it had, it, had a, it had a metal uh, 
mesh cage around it where you couldn't change the channel. And these guys are having to watch us preach all the time. That's the only TV they could get at certain times of day. <laughs> and he said, Brother Copeland, man, he said, I cussed you. He said, I threw my boots at you. He said, I called you every name I could think of. And he said, boy, I'm asking you to forget me. And, and, and he, he, began to, he, he began to cry and he said, I'm so sorry. I said, man, you don't owe me any apology. Well, he said, oh yeah, yeah. He said, and you, one, one time you said, <laughs> he said, <laughs> oh, Jesus, help me tell this. Uh, he said, you were, you were standing there and, and you, you said, if, as a point of contact, if you want to just touch the television screen or what, and, 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 and I started praying, and I'm praying the, the prayer of faith uh, for the sick. He said, Brother Cooper, he said, I just pulled my bridges down. And he said, I just backed up to the television set. And he said, I said, heal this. And he did. <laughs> and whoa, glory to God. He said, he did. Oh, glory. And he said, and I, he said right then, I said, oh, 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 Jesus, come into my heart. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. God loves you, man. God loves you, little girl. And it is his greatest desire for you to receive the gift. Amen. Now, let's go over to 1 Peter chapter 2. And, uh, sir, no, the Lord said it for us to go to Isaiah first. And, and we'll look in the 53rd chapter of the book of Isaiah. And um, Isaiah 53, verse 4. Now listen to this. Surely He, Jesus, has borne our griefs, carried our sorrows, Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. Now, in the, in the Hebrew text, the word griefs and sorrows. He hath borne our sicknesses, diseases, weaknesses, and pains, but, and our griefs and sorrows. Don't, don't leave the griefs and sorrows out. Because when you think about it, grief and sorrow are the products of pain and sickness and disease and sin. Now, let's make sure of that. Let's go to the book of Matthew chapter 8. And we're looking here at God's heavenly gift. Now notice what he said there. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. Now let's see how the Holy Spirit translates that and interprets that. Verse 16 of the 8th chapter of Matthew, When the evening was come, they brought unto Jesus many that were possessed with, the, with devils. He cast out the spirits with His word and healed all that were sick. He didn't turn down anybody. He didn't turn down deliverance to anybody. 
The only reason anybody wouldn't get anything is because he didn't believe it. And over in the sixth chapter of the book of Mark, in his own hometown, they refused to believe it and, and actually decided they'd rather kill him than to believe what he said. And there it said he could do no mighty work. Didn't, didn't say he wouldn't, said he couldn't. There was no connection with them. Now notice this, that it might be fulfilled. Say fulfilled. What does fulfilled mean? That means that that has been done. It has been fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. All right. Surely he hath borne our griefs and sorrows, that it might be fulfilled by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Himself took, or Himself bore our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. All right. Now then, we go, whose did it bear? Ours. Who's ours? Ours is whosoever. All right. He bore the sin of the world. He's God's heavenly gift to the world. Salvation is God's heavenly gift to the world. Healing, deliverance from sickness, disease, weakness, pain, grief, and sorrow is a gift. Wow. Now, let's go over to 1 Peter. I want you to notice the relationship of something here now. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24. Jesus, His own self, bare our sins in His own body on the tree or on the cross, right? He bore our sicknesses, diseases, weakness, and pains, our transgressions, our sins, in other words, by whose stripes we are healed. Now notice this. Who His own self bare our sins in His own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin, should live under righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. Now, is were present tense? No. Is were future tense? Is he going to bear them? Well, I know he's going to heal me someday in his own good time. Well, that sounds humble and all of that, but it's just actually a lie from hell. By whose stripes ye were healed. Now, let me ask you something. When did he bear your sins? Well, Brother Copeland has said he, his own self bare our sins in his body on the tree. Yeah. Well, when did he bear your sickness, disease, weakness, and pains, griefs, and sorrows? On the same day, on the same cross, shed the same blood. Let me ask you another question. Does salvation belong to us? Well, yeah, Brother Copeland, you've already said that a dozen times. I know what I'm, but I'm asking you now. Well, uh, yes, Brother Copeland, salvation was, was God's gift to the world. Yes, amen. By whose stripes ye were healed. That's past tense. I mean, brother, that happened 2,000 years ago. Now, in the mind of God, now, now think, think with me. In the mind of God the Father, in the mind of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, in the mind of the Holy Spirit, you and I and every other human being on earth was healed. In the mind of God, in the mind of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and in the mind of the Holy Spirit, every human being 
on earth. Salvation belongs to them. Amen. You could actually say it like this, but I, I, I'm hesitant to say it like this because somebody will run off and say I said something else, but I didn't. In the mind of God, for as he's concerned, the power of the devil is totally, completely <laughs> crushed and broken, and he's not holding sin and trespass against anybody on earth. Nobody. And as far as he's concerned, everybody's, everybody's saved, everybody's born again, everybody's filled with the Spirit, and everybody's healed. Everybody's prosperous because he's not left anybody else. Oh, goody, goody, we're all going to heaven. No, they haven't all gone to, gone to heaven, and they're not all going to heaven. It's the one who receives the gift of righteousness, the ones that receive Jesus as Lord and Savior and activate that salvation. It belongs to anybody that will receive it because it's a whosoever gift. But you, you have one thing to do. Jesus did all the hard part. We only have one thing. Receive it. Hallelujah. Now, there could have been a gift sitting on your table. Let, let, me, let me give you a, 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 an illustration of this. I started to say you, you could have a gift sitting on your table and sit there and look at it all your life. And, and never get, get any good out of whatever's in there because you didn't open the thing. Well, when you said, Jesus, come into my heart, take my life and do something with it. I mean, that, that's when you unopen the gift of salvation. Glory to God. And, and then when you said, uh, oh, Jesus, you said in, in Luke 11 chapter that you give the Holy Spirit to all that ask and I'm asking, and, and you, re, you, just, you received, because he said so, you received the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit and you begin to speak in <laughs> the heavenly gift of supernaturally speaking to God. He that speaks in unknown tongues speaks not unto men, but unto God. How be in the Spirit he speaks mystery. All of that's a gift. All of it is a gift. There's a story about a woman that served the queen. This is a true story. Almost all of her life, very young girl when she did. And it came time for her retirement. And the queen gave her uh, a document that she had framed and had it put up in her little place. And she just didn't, after, after she left the employment of the queen, she just kept going down. She got sick and she's living in an old, in a very damp old place down by the, by the water and was sick and, and, and she didn't have enough to eat. They find that someone uh, got a hold of a doctor that came by there and see if she had pneumonia. He said, this, this, this woman needs to be taken care of. And he walked over there and looked on the, on the wall. That document was a strong pension to take care of her for the rest of her life on this earth because the queen loved her and wanted her taken care of. She couldn't read. She just knew it came from the queen was special. She hung it on her wall, but she never unwrapped the gift until that doctor read it and so on. We hope you enjoyed today's teaching from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. And remember, Jesus is Lord.